today for math, what we are going to do is we're going to learn how to trade pennies for dimes. If I wanted to show 14 cents using only pennies, I would be grabbing out 14 of those brown pennies, wouldn't I? Because each penny, you know, is worth one cent. And we could say, okay, that's fine, but sometimes carrying around all those pennies can be a real weight in our pockets, right? And so what we want, what we want to be able to do today is to trade some of those pennies for a dime. Because remember that one dime is equal to 10 cents. So it's worth the same amount of money it's just a lot lighter in your pockets. So I can take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can take these ten pennies away. I can take them away. And in place of it, <clears throat> I can use one dime. One dime is the same thing as ten pennies, which is ten cents. How much money do I still have? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I still have 14 cents. So 14 pennies is equal to one dime and four pennies. Okay, it's worth the same. Now, <clears throat> what if I have 18 pennies? Okay, now I have 18 pennies. 18 pennies is a lot. I probably can't keep them all in my hand without dropping them all. And so I want to exchange. I want to exchange some pennies for a dime. Remember that one dime is equal to 10 cents. So how many pennies can I take away to trade? I can take away 10 pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to take these 10 pennies away. And if I took them away, I still have to replace them with something. I'm going to replace it with one of those dimes. Do I still have 18 cents? Well, let's check. 10 cents, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I still do have those eight, that 18 cents. I just now have a penny to replace some of those dimes. So 18 pennies is equal to, it's the same as, excuse me, how many dimes? One dime. And how many pennies do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, what if I had 20 pennies? I want you just to look at that for a second. 20 pennies. Okay, these are all pennies. I want to trade the pennies for dimes if I can. How many pennies do I need to equal a dime? I need 10 pennies to equal one dime. Okay, so I need to count out a group of 10 pennies to replace it for a dime. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, I took those out. But I took them out, I have to replace them with a dime. 
Now, that's 10 of them. Let's see if I have another 10 pennies. If I don't, I can't exchange it. But if I have 10, I can change it out for another dime. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I do, you guys. So I can take those 10 pennies away and replace it with a dime. So what did we just learn? <clears throat> 20 pennies is equal to 2 dimes and 0 pennies. Now remember what I taught you last week about penny spot and dime spot? That's going to help us. What if I have 36 pennies? Okay, I have 36 pennies. If I want to take my 36 pennies and I want to exchange them for dimes and nickel, uh, dimes and pennies, I'm sorry. I'm going to take my 36 pennies and I'm going to exchange them for dimes and pennies. How many of each am I going to have? Well, remember that I can look at pennies and dimes like this, and that's going to help me. How many dimes am I going to have? I'm going to have three dimes. And how many pennies will I have? I will have six pennies. If you need to double check it, you are always welcome to draw it out. Or if you have your own spare change, you could go ahead and get out the change. Okay, now let's count and make sure that it equals 36 cents. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. It still does equal 36 cents. How about if I have 52 pennies? 52 pennies. 52 pennies is equal to 5 dimes and 2 pennies. Which digit in the number 52 told us the number of dimes? The 5 did, right, told us the number of dimes. And which digit told us the number of pennies? The 2 did. So the digit on the right tells you the pennies. The digit to the left of it tells you the number of dimes. <clears throat> okay. So let's take a look at just a few more of these. If I have 58 pennies, that is equal to how many dimes and how many pennies? Take a look at the number 58. Which digit tells you the number of dimes? The digit on the left. How many dimes? Five. The digit on the right tells you the pennies. How many pennies will I have? I will have eight. Okay, we want to have the fewest possible pennies. Okay, that's our goal with this. Let's try one more. Let's do 17 pennies. Okay, the number 17, 17 pennies. How many of them are going to be dimes and how many of them will be pennies? Remember that I can put a P and a D above there to help me. How many dimes will I have? I will have one dime. How many pennies will I have? I will have seven pennies. This is not something that we're going to be getting rid of anytime soon, first grade. This is something that's going to stick around for a while. So just keep practicing this as much as you can is my encouragement. Grab out dimes and pennies that you have as spare change around the house. Have lots of pennies. Split them up into groups of 10. Take a dime to replace it. Remember that if you're getting rid of pennies, you have to replace it still with something else. So since we're talking about dimes and pennies, you need to make sure that there's 10 of them. If you do not have 10, you cannot replace it with a dime. 
okay? I would like you please to go ahead and grab out your guided class practice 42A. Go ahead and this is the time to get your name on your paper. And remember that today is November 10th, 2020. November 10th, 2020. Our year has sure flown by, hasn't it? And let's go ahead and get started. Marcus had four dimes. His mother gave him one dime. How many dimes does Marcus have now? Draw a picture and write a number sentence for the story. Write the answer with a label. What do we need to know? We need to know how many dimes he has now. He started with four dimes. His mother gave him another one. So did we add or subtract? We definitely added. So we know that we're going to have an adding problem. We're going to have a sum, some more type of a problem. So we're going to start by drawing out four dimes. If you already started doing this, that's beautiful. His mother gave him one more. Our label we know is going to be dimes. So how is this going to look? We started with four. Four dimes plus, am I going to say one dimes or one dime? One dime, right, that's a singular. She only added one, oh, one extra. Sorry about that, you guys. Four dimes plus one dime equals how many total? One, two, three, four, five. Five dimes. So my answer is going to be five dimes. But now it's going to take it one step farther for us today because it wants to know at the end how much money that is. Well, remember that a dime, one dime equals 10 cents. So we need to count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 cents. So I need to write 50 cents. <clears throat> okay, if you're not done with the number sentence, the answer and how much money it is, Go ahead and pause, and when you're done, come back and be ready for number two. Let's read the directions very carefully. It says shade one-fourth. Write the fraction. So I need to shade one-fourth. How many of those pieces will I shade then? One. Does it matter which one I choose? No. You did not have to choose the same one as me. <clears throat> Just shade it with your pencil. One fourth. Now I have to write that fraction. Some people choose to use that line as their fraction bar. One fourth. Other people choose to use it as their answer line and they write one fourth. I prefer that you practice writing the fraction bar. So this is the way that I would prefer you do it. You write it for yourself. Okay, number two, the second one here, it says shade three sixths. So how many am I coloring in? Three. And then I need to write the fraction three sixths. The three is how many were shaded. And the six is how many total pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is your fraction bar, remember. Separates the numerator from the denominator. The number shaded versus the total number. 
And the third one says shade two eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how I get eighths. Okay. And then it says to shade two of them. Once again, it doesn't matter which ones you shade. I'm just going to shade those two right there. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay. You don't have to color it in real dark. Don't waste your pencil for that. Now I need to write the fraction. Two eighths. Two, because that's how many I shaded in. And I have how many total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two eighths. Okay, number three, we did not do and we could not do because we were not in person to be able to test apples out this year. So we're going to be skipping any of them that are asking about an apples graph this time around. But we are going to move on to number four. It says I have three dimes and four pennies. How much money is that? I'm already going to put my cent sign because I don't want to forget about it. So I'm going to make sure my cent sign's there. Then it said something about pennies and dimes. And I want to make sure I put them in the right order. So I'm going to put a D and a P up there. And that's okay. I have three dimes and I have four pennies. How much total money is that? 34 cents. Okay, I have five tens and six ones. How much money is that? The ones and then the tens is to the left of it. How many tens? Five. How many ones? Six. So how much is that? Fifty-six. That is not going to have a cent sign because it was talking about tens and ones. This first one is. It reminded us it was money. That's why it needs to have the cents. Now, just like our lesson for today, it says make 23 cents using the fewest dimes and pennies. Remember that if I have 23 cents and I want to use the fewest pennies and the fewest dimes, this is going to help us. How many dimes will I use? Two. Yep. And how many pennies will I use? Three. Exactly. Okay, now for number five, we need to fill in the missing add-ins. We need to find these missing numbers that are going to equal... 10 in this case each time. Remember that you can start at your sum and you can go backwards however many you already know or you can start at what you know for your add-in and keep counting up until you get to your sum. Um, I will go ahead and make a little number line here so that we can see. I'm going to choose to start at 4. And I'm going to count up and I'm going to see how many times I had to leapfrog until I got to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I had to leapfrog 6 times. Does 4 plus 6 more equal 10? Yes, it does. Now I want to show you the other way, especially because this add-in is small. This time we're going to start at our sum, our answer, and we're going to go back what we already know, which is 2. 10, 9, 8. 1 spot, 2 spot. And what I land on, I landed on 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. If you need to make little balls or something so that you can physically see that, or if you would like to get out your linking cubes, or if you would like to get out your little tiles, you can use those as well. Let's count to make sure I'm right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 8 plus 2 more does equal 10. And here, because 7 is a close number compared to 10, something plus 7 is 10, I'm going to actually start at the 7 and count until I get to 10. And I'm going to leapfrog. One, two, three. I had to move three spaces. Okay? You're welcome to do that if that is helpful for you. Just like you're welcome to use your red folder if that is helpful for you. 
Now that you've completed the front side with me, I would like you please to make sure that you complete the back side on your own. Make sure that you're shading what it asks you for and make sure that you also write the fraction using a fraction bar. Notice how I just wrote the fraction bar. Okay. <clears throat> and make sure to follow all your directions. Fill the missing numbers in your patterns. Take a look at what you're counting by here. Um, if you need to write a penny spot in a dime, oops, sorry. If you need to write a dime spot in a penny spot, do it. If you need to write a spot for tens and ones, do it. It's okay to do those things. It is not wrong. And then fill in your missing add-ins. I just showed you a couple different ways that you can do that. When you're done with this, it looks like you don't need to put the date today. If you'd like, you can still rewrite it. November 10th, 2020. It's always great practice. Okay, and then when you're done with this, go ahead, please, and put it in to your Tuesday folder.